Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're doing a painting based on Subnautica. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. Over on Steven Plays, we recently did a first 20 of Subnautica, and I loved it. Like, I've been playing it a little bit each day since then, and I'm really intrigued by it. Um, now, I really like underwater things, like I really loved the game Abzu, and this is a lot like Abzu in the fact that you get to go around and see a bunch of cool things underwater, but it's alien and you're trying to survive. So I liked that aspect of it, um, just because you can kind of go anywhere and do whatever you want. Now, um, the first thing I need to do is I want to do this at a night scene, so I need to gesso this canvas in black. Now, they do sell canvases gessoed in black, but um, not in the size that I normally use. I use an inch and a half deep canvas, and those don't come in black already. So I have to gesso it myself with some black gesso, and I'm just going to use one of these foam craft brushes. These are like a dollar at a craft store or Walmart or wherever. Um, and I'm just going to start kind of in the middle until I get kind of like a good coverage here in the middle, and then I'm going to go all the way to all of the edges, doing the tops, the sides, and then once that's dry, I can do the bottom of the canvas. Now, I was taught to gesso from the center out because this part will dry first and kind of tighten the canvas against the stretcher bars. Um, and you want it to be a nice tight canvas so you have some spring to the canvas. Um, so that's how I was taught to gesso in college. And the great thing about gessoing your own pieces is you can kind of customize the texture of the surface you're painting on. So um, this canvas I think is a medium weight texture so there's um, quite a bit of bumps where the fabric is woven together and you can see that if I'm doing light coats of painting. So if I'm doing a nice big sky you will see this texture underneath. Some people really like that and I'm one of them and some people don't like to have that on their painting. They like it to be a lot smoother. So, like I said, the cool thing with gesso is you can customize the texture. You can put down a layer, let it dry, lightly sand it, give it another layer, lightly sand it, um, until you're happy with the texture. You can keep applying some coats of gesso until it's where you want it to be. Um, so I'm just going to apply one coat, let it dry, give it a second coat just because sometimes um, I get these little pin pricks where the air bubbles underneath kind of pop and then I can see the white canvas. So I do like to give it a two coats at least just to make sure I have solid coverage of the gesso. When I'm doing these nighttime sky paintings, I normally do a lot of galaxies and use the sponges to tap in kind of like a galaxy or a nebula in the background. Um, now with Subnautica, because there's so much reflected light from that big moon um, and it's always in the sky, there's not really going to be a whole lot of tiny little stars that you would see. Um, they get drowned out by that light because it's kind of polluting the sky with the brightness. So you only see a couple and they're very bright and um, they're just very scattered across the sky. Normally I would use a toothbrush and kind of do this motion to give a splatter of the white paint to show those stars, but those are too small and you wouldn't see those with that much light pollution. So I have a few options. I can sit there like with a paintbrush and just tap in stars by hand, which I may have to do, but there's a few other things I can try. So I'm going to gesso this board in black so it's completely solid black and try a few different things on the board. I don't want my night sky to be completely black. I want it to have a little bit of color, even if it's just a hint. So I'm taking some cyan and I'm laying it along the bottom of my canvas, and I'm going to fade it up and do a gradient into the black gesso. Now because this is dry, I can't really do a nice blend, so I have some black gesso on my canvas that I can blend it into up top here. I was doing this gradient and it didn't turn out as well as they normally do, and I think it's because the gesso dries really, really quickly, like faster than acrylic paint does, so I was having a lot of problems trying to blend it through here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a solid blue layer, like a very, very dark blue. So I've mixed some gesso into the blue just to make a nice solid color, and I'm just going to paint the entire thing with that. Um, and my thought behind that is the sky is going to be so dark, it's going to even be hard to tell there's some sort of transition to begin with, because the water is going to cover a lot of this, and I wanted to keep it all down here anyway. So if I just do the entire thing in blue, um, it'll just give it some sort of hint of color so it's not solid black.
I like this dark blue much better. Now it's still wet so it's kind of giving these reflections and it's looking darker in some areas and lighter in others but trust me it's all the same color. So I'm gonna let this dry before I do anything else to it but in the meantime I have that canvas board that I just would black to do the practice stars on. Um, so this is a test canvas I had done for the Star Fox painting just to test some things out and I use it all the time. You can see like other layers back here from when I've done other things um, but I use the toothbrush to make these stars and there's a ton of them and I could put hand painted stars on this, just a couple. And I may have to do that, but I wanted to test to see if there was a better way to do it. Because if I do the random element like I do with the other painting with the toothbrush, it looks a lot more natural. I still have a little bit of control with where it goes, but I have a more natural effect. So I'm gonna take this canvas board and do some tests. So I'm using Titanium White and High Flow, which is kind of an ink consistency. And I have a few things I can do to try and make these bigger splatters. And the first thing is I'm just gonna drip this paint straight onto this canvas board. So if I just drip this, um, if I do it carefully, um, some of them are bigger, but some of them are too big. And it also does kind of the splatter where it hits and then bounces. So that's not ideal for the situation. So the first thing I'm going to try is mixing it with this airbrush transparent extender. And I'm gonna try using the two paintbrush method to splatter over the toothbrush. And um, I'm just gonna mix these two things together and get some on this brush. And then I'm going to hit the brushes like they're drumsticks, uh, wood on wood. And it goes everywhere when I do that. And some of them are a bit bigger, but there are still too many small stars for what I want. I'm also gonna try the splatter brush with that mixture. Um, so I've just gotten the tips of the bristles, and if I just pull back and let go, um, these are a lot smaller than the two paintbrush where I hit them method. So my next mixture is open thinner, um, which is something that you can use to thin the heavy body paints, but I'm using it to thin the high flow paint. And this doesn't have a binder, so I can't add too much of it to my mix. But um, some of those are bigger, but there's a lot of them. I don't want that many. I'm gonna mix some of this polymer medium into the thinner, the one I just did, because this will make it a little bit thicker and hopefully it'll stick together a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna mix the thinner with the polymer and the titanium white. So I'm not thrilled with any of these. That last one with the polymer medium and the thinner was a bit better, but um, some of them were just too big and some were too small. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just taking a paintbrush and hand painting all my stars in. I've been really indecisive with this painting. Um, I originally did my sketch, um, like I do for all my pieces, before starting, and I liked it. I really liked the composition. In fact, um, the developer had put out a composite image where they had taken like our actual moon from Earth um, and kind of made up this image to show some of the visual assets they were putting in the game. And I loved the composition of it. It was so well done. Um, there are some things I was going to change about it, but um, after drawing it, I was like, oh, you know, the underwater part is obviously so important. And I really love the bioluminescence of everything under the water. And I really felt like it was missing it because it wasn't Subnautica without the underwater part. So um, I had drawn this and I had done all of my painting up to this point. And I decided I was going to redraw my sketch, but include some of the underwater portion. Um, so what I thought about was those photographs people take where they're half underwater, half above water to show both parts of it. So I thought it would be really cool to kind of have this wave come down here. That's this double line. So that's going to be right the edge of the water on the canvas there. And everything below will be stuff under the water and everything above will be everything above the water. My other mistake doing the gradient before was using something that was very different from what I was trying to blend it with. I was going from cyan all the way into the black that was the gesso. Um, so this time I'm using something that's pretty dark blue already and I'm trying to blend it into a dark blue instead of something solid black. So this blue I have here um, is cyan with Mars black and just a touch of titanium white to lighten it up and it's making it a little gray which is nice so it's not so saturated. 
and I'm trying to remember the bottom third of my canvas is going to be underwater so I won't see this color anyway. So I'm going to blend this light blue color into the same color here. Um, so I made a new dark blue up with cyan and Mars black. There's just no gesso in it so it should blend easier with this color. There's three parts to this painting, the sky, above water, and below water. And I want to work on the division between these two first, so I'm going to use some frog tape and tape off my horizon line. I've made sure this line is perfectly straight, um, I've measured a few places across the canvas to make sure it's the same all the way, and I'm just going to use this frog tape to kind of make the nice hard edge. I've mixed up a lighter shade of the blue I have here already. If it was too close, you wouldn't see that nice horizon line. So I'm taking this lighter blue, and I'm going to lay it down all the way along the horizon here, and I'm going to fade it to a deeper blue. So I've taken ultramarine blue with a little bit of Mars black. It's basically more of a violet version of this color, and I'm going to fade my light blue here into that until I get to this wave edge. The scale and placement of everything is very important for the composition, so I have to get all of the big pieces right first before I can do the small things, because once those are in, it kind of determines, well, if this is this big, then this should be this much smaller and this much smaller. So I started with the big moon, and I drew it in using a compass. Now um, this compass was big enough to use um, to draw this circle. But on the canvas, with the springiness of it, I couldn't hold it and draw at the same time. So I did this in my sketchbook and I ended up drawing a quarter of my circle. Um, my paper wasn't big enough to draw a whole circle. So that I could put this point here on my point, and then I could just sketch in this quarter, spin it, line it back up with the point, and sketch in this corner, and then all the way around until I had my entire circle. Um, for the small one, then I could decide, you know, how big it needs to be and where it needs to be in relationship to, to the big one. So I did the same thing in my sketchbook, but because it's smaller, I could draw the whole thing. And I drew a couple extra lines in case I wanted to trim it and make it smaller. So then I drew the small moon there, um, and trying to get the placement of that right because it needs to be higher. Um, and then I could draw my life pod. Now at first when I drew it, it was too big. It was the same size as the moon, which would be fine if it seemed like it was closer to us, but where I wanted it to be and how far back and small and insignificant in this vast ocean and sky, it needed to be smaller. So I redrew it and kind of filled in all of the pieces for it. And then I realized that I had this big, big wave, and then I have all of these small waves. I don't have anything in between. So right here, where I should start to have some medium waves going back into those smaller waves, I just have smaller waves. So I drew in this chalk line and then this other one here to kind of show myself, well, I need some bigger waves that are in there that aren't as big as my big wave, so they can have kind of this gradient going back and getting smaller the further away they go. So at some point, I'll just take this light blue up and start to fill in these two big waves. I can't just paint the moons orange and white to start off with. That blue is going to come through and not make it as bright. So in order to make it white, I'm taking this white, and this is a liquid white inside of a paint marker, 
and I'm just gonna go right along this edge and I'll probably switch to a brush for the majority of it because it would take forever with this. But I'm gonna block these in white and I'm gonna block the life pod in black because it needs to be darker anyway, it's more of a silhouette. I'm gonna fill that in black first before I add the color and the value. I was working on these waves down here and I really liked this one that I had, but this one just didn't have the right shape. It didn't look like water. So I painted it dark and I was letting that dry um, before I went and redid that highlight on top for the bright color. And I decided to work underneath here to start to bring in this underwater space. And I used my same sky colors I had here. I started with the light one on tops of these little hills and then faded it dark as it went down. And then above it, I started with black and faded towards light at the very top part of this crest. While that's drying, before I start to add sand and coral, I'm working on blocking in these moons a base color. The smaller one, I'm using a warm gray, and I made this with titanium white and Mars black, and just a little bit of magenta, so it was just a bit warmer. This moon does have quite a bit of red and pink to it, so I wanted to have that nice base to kind of help pull it that way as I start to add that color. For the big one, I'm going to fill it in with burnt sienna, and I can take some burnt umber later and do kind of the darker sections, and I can use kind of like a lighter um, orange and yellow for the highlight parts, and that way that burnt sienna is kind of in the middle of all that. That's kind of where I'm trying to go, is filling in the base colors in the middle of everything that there's going to be, so I can easily work lighter and darker for that value. I want to start bringing in some detail for the entire piece um, because right now it's kind of just all of these half done parts. So I'm going to start underwater first because I think that's going to take a lot of layers and I'm taking some glazing liquid with some Titan Buff and I'm just using a little bit of the Titan Buff so it's very transparent. And I want to lay it down just a little bit here on the very top of this hill. And I'm going to start to build these layers of sand up. And I want it to blend from this Titan buff into that blue. So I'm using that glazing liquid to kind of do a gradient, but um, one of them is dry, so it's just going to be kind of a visual gradient. So I'm going to lay the one down and fade it into the blue, and after it dries I can keep adding more and more Titan buff to kind of the top middle section. My sand idea um, didn't work as well as I hoped it did. Um, it was too bright, it was too different from the blue that was underneath. Um, so in order to fix it, I've mixed up kind of a grayish blue color. I made a gray and then I took my light blue here and I mixed it in to kind of make it a bit more in between all of these colors. And I'm going to go back over the sand color with that and kind of blend it down. And then after it's dry, I can add more of that Titan Buff, this color, into that grayish blue until it's more Titan Buff, and then I can go back over and give it this highlight. I really like how the sand turned out. It looks a lot more like sand than what I had before um, with that Titan Buff paint. So I had that gray and I had some of the blue from the ocean, the lighter blue that's kind of up under this wave. Um, so I mixed those two together and kind of did the 
darkest part of the highlight here. And then I started to work more and more towards the gray, the closer towards the top I got. Um, and then as I got closer to the top, I also added just a little bit of tight and buff every time until it was more and more tight and buff um, just on the very top part of these hills. And it's not pure tight and buff, it still has a lot of that blue and a lot of that gray in it, but I'm really happy with the color. It looks more like sand than it did before. Um, I also realized I forgot the bump on the top of the life pod, um, the escape hatch there. So I just took my black marker and just did a little bit of a bump there. I'm not going to do full detail on the life pod because I do want it to be in silhouette. And um, even though it has those two glowy circles, you don't really see a whole lot from far away. It's very obscured by distance and by the fact that it's nighttime. So I'm just going to do a little bit of highlight on it so you can tell that it's a round object instead of this flat black silhouette here. The smaller moon is a lot like our moon here on Earth. Um, it's kind of the same colors, it has a lot of the same textures, it's kind of just a floating rock in the sky. Now this needs a little bit more yet, um, if I kind of think about the left side being a highlight where the sun came down and is still kind of shining some light up there, there should be a dark shadow on the back side here. Um, so later after it's dry I'll draw in a crescent to kind of make it look spherical instead of this flat rock shape in the sky. But um, that one's more like that, it's more of a rock. And this one has more clouds to it and kind of this covering over it where there's kind of like an under layer and then clouds on top. So I need to kind of keep that in mind as I'm painting that I kind of have this underlying surface and then this covering on top. So I'm going to bring in kind of the same highlights here on the left, the same side as the little one, um, where there's more yellows and oranges and more darker brown colors on the right. starting to come along nicely, but um, it looks really blurry. This one kind of has that same issue going on, but definitely not like this one is. So the first thing I'm going to do to fix it up is I'm going to darken up some of these parts of the burnt umber to give it a shadow inside of that shadow. Um, and that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to take that burnt umber and kind of fill in some smaller details in these open spaces where it's kind of the orange color. That way it has more detail and more definition to it. I also might clean up some of the lines like this one here kind of on the edge of these craters, but that's really going to help kind of give it some definition so it's not this blurry circle here in the sky. Um, I'm going to do the same thing over on this moon, just using some of those darker grays to just bring in some other details more in the highlight areas, and that should really help these moons look like actual moons. I wanted to really define the edge of this water here, just so you could tell that there was something there and it wasn't blending into the rest of this. So I was looking at some photographs that photographers have done of a split picture and saw kind of how the water treats the light, where there's a highlight on top, a shadow in the middle, and there's kind of this highlight on the bottom where it gets like refracted through it. So I kind of added that in and I um, brightened up a little bit of these waves just with some lighter blue colors. I also took some black and kind of brought in these shadow shapes 
And what's going on those are kind of these orange things that sit right on top of the sand. They look kind of like little fish eggs or moss or something, but orange. So um, I filled in the black first and I'm going to bring in some burnt sienna on top. And then after that's dry, I'm going to move into lighter and lighter oranges until it's kind of this neon orange. There's also some kind of like bushy um, black stuff underneath the water that doesn't get any color, it doesn't have any of that bioluminescence. So I started to bring some of that in to make this feel complete. Once this orange part is dry, I can start to do the rest of the coral. filling in underneath the water with a lot of different animals and plants. Um, I really wanted to include a rabbit ray because those are my absolute favorite ones I've seen so far. Um, I love how sleek they are. I love their coloring at night. Um, they look really cool. So I also have some peepers, um, some boomerang fish, and I filled all of them in black and I filled in all of the bioluminescent parts with white. I really want those parts to stand out and glow so I need to have that white there first so the color can really shine and not get muddied down by all of the black underneath. Um, so I'm starting by filling in these points on the boomerang fish and I have a phthalo blue and a phthalo green and I've mixed it in with some white because it's not really colorful, it's mostly just bright white. And it starts with the color towards the fish and then it fades towards white as it gets towards the points. All of the coral is blocked in in chalk or paint. Most things have a bioluminescence, but not everything. Um, so I started to fill in just a nice variety of everything, trying to like spread things out, try and show different variations of like how things grow. Um, so I have the ones that produce the acid in here. Those have the white rings right now. Um, they kind of look like petunia flowers that have the hole in the center. So once that white dries, I can start to fill those in. There's these big fan ones that kind of sit right here. They're kind of violet in color. And then there's these ones that almost look like Christmas trees where they're like a regular leafless deciduous tree with the, all these white little dots on them. So I filled those in with black for the branches and then white for the dots just to kind of bring that in. Um, there's these kind of little palm ones over here, and then there's these two ones that are kind of in each grouping. Um, so I'm just going to continue to add these colors, filling in where things go um, with the lights and the darks. Um, these acid producing ones are going to be a little bit tougher because they're so round and kind of lumpy. <laughs> so I'm just going to start to fill those in with some of those pink colors and use shadows to make it look like it wraps around the bottom. I also did the lights on the life pod, um, and they don't look like they're illuminated to me. They just look teal. They don't look like they're neon lights. So I'm going to take some white at some point and just kind of go in the center of all of this just so it looks like it's lit up. The palm fronds over here, I started by doing a light blue-green color to do the ribs of all of them. And then the petals are heart-shaped with a little bit of violet and a little bit more of that green. So I just kind of tapped in those colors to kind of form a little heart shape on the end of each of these palm frond ribs. Now that that's done, I really only have two types left. The big fan and then these ones. And because there's more of those, I think I need to do those first. 
The bigger ones of those, like these really big ones that are sitting in here, kind of have more of a red and peach color, and the smaller ones are more violet, but they all kind of fade from black into blue going up the sides. And then from there is where they start to get different from each other. So I'm going to do all of their bases first, and then I'll start working on the inner parts. I'm working on my last bits of coral, these fan shape ones here. Um, I filled them in violet first and I'm letting that dry, but once that's dry I can kind of do the background or like the skin of it. Um, and it's light at the tips and it fades to black and then towards the very base and center it gets light again. But once that's dry I can go back to working on those um, spines or ribs throughout there. Um, otherwise, everything else looks kind of like it's floating on top of these hills of sand. So I'm just going to take some shading gray and go underneath all of these pieces so they kind of sit down on the sand. I wanted to make sure the stars were right. Um, after testing out some splatter paint options, none of them really worked for how I wanted it to look. So I'm just doing it by hand. I went over in chalk first, and now I'm going to go over with um, white paint and a marker. Some of them are going to be a little bit brighter, but mostly they're all going to be kind of small. And I've noticed they kind of sit in groupings, like constellations across the entire night sky. So I didn't try and do them just randomly like polka dots. I tried to kind of group them together into groupings of stars. these fan corals um, I did the veins in white first and then I did some cyan on top just because um, you wouldn't see the cyan by itself on top of that violet it's just too dark so I needed that white there first so the cyan could show up but once all that was dry um, I went in the very center of all of the blue with some black after that was dry I could do these tiny little glowy dots at the bottom I started with a magenta to fill those in and then I went white on top of that because they are slightly pink the last thing I have to do is erase all of the extra chalk behind the stars. I needed to make sure they were dry first, so I left that till the end. And we're done! We have a half underwater and a half above water scene from Subnautica. If you're interested in this piece, you can buy a poster, or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmail.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.